You see, Riverside is one of ten campuses of the University of California system. The College of Engineering is relatively young. We invested into nanotechnology, materials for energy generation and storage, and material science engineering program. We intentionally created material science and engineering as a program rather than an individual department. This is a reflection of the fact that material science is a broad field rather than a narrowly defined discipline. We believe that such a structure helps our students in learning. Based on its nature, material science and engineering relies on a number of different areas of expertise. Therefore, the inherent nature of material science is interdisciplinary. What's unique at UCR is that the program itself, the material science and engineering program, is fed by different departments of electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical and environmental engineering, bioengineering, uh, that provide expertise to the material science program. Materials is an enabling technology. It is at the beginning of food chain. So what we teach students is how to make materials to perform the way we would like the materials to perform. But then we connect this to the other users who take these materials and put it in a functional system. UCR College of Engineering is very young and the Material Science and Engineering program is even younger than that. So students and faculty really have the opportunity to make a, a, a unique impact and a positive impact. In our lab we design and build a lot of our own uh, materials processing equipment. It offers us unique opportunities. By designing and building our own equipment we can make materials that cannot be made any other way. Our current activated pressure assistant densification device allows us to make materials that are unique. Many of the parts that we use for our CAPA device were actually designed and machined right here by students. We take advantage of very high electric currents and also mechanical pressure to uh, densify materials from nanopowders mostly to make materials for different applications that really is the only way to make them. By leveraging nanostructure, we can make materials that are, uh, have better properties than their microcrystalline counterparts. So for example, by designing something with a nanocrystalline grain size, we can make a material that would normally not be transparent, we can make it transparent. For undergraduates, it's a really exciting experience for them to get in the lab and to get some hands-on experience. I've had students working on gas sensing from chemical engineering and students working on photovoltaics from electrical and mechanical engineering and I've had students working on photocatalysis from chemical engineering. The undergraduates in my lab don't wash the beakers only. They actually do the experiments. They synthesize nanomaterials. They synthesize biomimetic composites. In my laboratory, we're preparing both college and graduate students to have that interdisciplinary, multi-dimensional expertise to go in and be our future scientific leaders uh, in this country. One of the projects we've been working on is understanding the architecture inside a club of a mantis shrimp. The mantis shrimp has this extra set of appendages that it uses to smash its prey. And it can do this, it's only four inches long, but it can impact its prey with 200 pounds of force, accelerate its club underwater faster than a 22 caliber bullet, and do this 50,000 times without failing its own club. The project that we worked on, we recently published in the journal Science in June of 2012, was understanding what is the architecture of the club? What is it made of? A lot of the things that I've developed in my laboratory now are now being spun off as startup companies and the students that are working in my labs, both undergraduate and graduate students, are going to be part of that startup company. So I think that's very exciting for me and for them. I'm very happy that my students do not have problems with job placement. Many of my students receive multiple job offers from uh, industry leaders such as Intel Corporation, Texas Instrument, Micron. They do very well after graduation. Some of the students receive faculty positions. My graduate students won a number of research awards for their Graphene Thermal Award. Some of these awards are from the Materials Research Society. I should also mention the IEEE Pioneer of Nanotechnology Award for 2011. I believe that our work on Graphene Thermal Properties made an impact in the field. Uh, the initial paper with the experimental report of thermal properties of graphene was cited uh, a thousand times in a matter of a couple of years. It stimulated theoretical developments and follow-up experiments in uh, many laboratories worldwide. 
close to 40% of our undergraduates do research in faculty's labs. And sometimes they end up writing papers together. As they get out of our college, they have hands-on experience. They know the laboratory tools, techniques, safety issues, and also, of course, the advanced research that they are doing. Innovations are happening more and more often at the materials level rather than the device and systems level. The next generation of scientists and engineers cannot be one-dimensional. They have to have expertise in multiple disciplines in order to be productive. 